let's divide 518 by, so let's gonna, we're gonna divide it by 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So we're dividing this whole number by a decimal. So we could also write this as 518, 518 divided, let me write a little bit bigger than that since we're gonna have to do some work with it, 518 divided by, under the division sign in white, divided by 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So the first thing we do, since we have this decimal here, we're dividing by decimals, to try to turn this into a whole number somehow. Well, the best way to turn this into a whole number is to multiply this by 10, which is essentially multiplying, shifting the decimal point over to the right. So this would become a seven. But we can't just do that only for what we're dividing by. We also have to do that to the 518 so that a value does not change. So we need to multiply both of these times 10. So if we move the decimal over to the right with the 0 0.7 to turn into a seven, we also need to move the decimal over to the right for 518. Now you're probably saying, well, I don't see a decimal in 518. Well, there is one, you just didn't have to write it because it's 518.00 and we can add as many zeros as we want. So we, if we move the decimal to the right, it becomes 5,180. So really what we're saying is 518 divided by 0 0.7 is the same thing, is the same thing as 5,180, 5,180 divided by, divided by seven. Notice, all we did by moving the decimal one place to the right is we multiplied both of these numbers by 10, which is not going to change the actual value of the decimal. One other way of thinking about this, if you wanted to write this as a fraction, this is the same thing. This is the same thing as 518 over 0 0.7. Over 0 0.7, you multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 10, you will get 5,180. You will get 5,180 over seven, over seven. So let's clean this up a little bit just so we remember what we did. So we moved the decimal over to the right one. So now this is just a seven. The decimal is there. In fact, we really don't have to write the decimal anymore. It's just a seven point, you could imagine 7.0. So we can just write this as a seven. And then the 518, the decimal is now out here. So this is 5,180, 5, and let's increase, increase this sign right over here. Now this is just a straight up long division problem. How many times does seven go into five? Well, it goes zero times, zero times seven. Actually, let's just, let's just cut to the chase. Seven doesn't go into five. It does go into 51. Seven times seven is 49. So it goes seven times. Seven times seven is 49. Subtract. 51 minus 49 is two. And now we can bring down, we can bring down this eight. Seven goes into 28 four times. Four times seven is 28. Subtract, you get a zero. Now we can bring down another zero. We wanna at least get to the decimal place. So we bring down another zero right over here. When I say get to the decimal place, we can put the decimal place up here too, just to make sure we're keeping track of the right place values or that we have the decimal in the right place. So notice I'm very particular when I'm doing seven goes into 51, I put the seven right above the one in the 51's place. When I'm saying seven goes into 28, I'm putting the four right above the eight in this one's place when we're doing the division. So now we say how many times does seven go to zero? Well, it goes zero times, zero times seven is zero. Subtract, you have no remainder. So we could keep going and we'll just keep getting zeros like this, but we see that this is equal to 740, 740.